Hi everyone, welcome to Kent's Kicks. A bit windy here today and uh, just a update to um, let you know what's going off really by the pond. Um, what I've done, I've been doing a bit of winterisation, a lot of you have been doing this at the moment, um, especially those who have got a heated pond, uh, but even those that haven't got a heated pond will winterise their pond and what that means is basically just providing a cover and if you're unheated, what that does is basically is stop the heat from exiting the pond surface. Um, if you've ever gone through a winter with a pond um, and it's unheated, well, unheated and the top is uh, not covered, you will sometimes see here in the morning or at night the sort of mist coming off your pond, the evaporation. Now, if you cover the pond either with balls, pond balls, or it's enclosed or perspex or whatever you got it will make all the difference it doesn't retain a lot of heat um, however what it will do is it will prevent heat um, you know all heat loss and it will also um, prevent fluctuations now my pond is I think yesterday it said it's at 9.5 degrees um, so what I did yesterday I did a bit of winter prep and I've so last year, if you look at my videos, I used um, pond balls. I've got pond balls and they just float. And the four inch pond balls are filled with air and half water. So the half of it goes below the water. Now what I hate about winterization is in the UK, this is gonna be for a good six months. Now, I'm sorry, I am not looking at that for six months. So rest of november december january february march let's say march is good so march april six months you're probably going to be getting rid of these in may april may so it's six months of looking at a bag of shit of a pond excuse the pun it gets me frustrated as you can see so what i want to do if i had a pond window i would not be blocking it up um, or anything like that because i would be prepared for a bit of heat loss through that window so I can still enjoy the pond as it's meant to be enjoyed. Um, now for me, my viewing point is here. Okay, so what I've done is I've got a piece of, under here, I've got an aluminium frame and that's a door from a greenhouse. I used to have double doors on this, double frame. And I've took it off and I've placed it along here and that is supported by a piece of the timber and the edging frame stop the jumpers that is normally here, along here. So if you look at my previous my videos before, you'll see it here sticking up perspex. I flipped it over, because what's that, what that has done, it's given like a drop down barrier of perspex lots. I've got my support going across the pond and I've got my barrier there. I've had to put a bit of net in the corner. So when I put my pond balls on in a minute, and I'll show you that, they will hit this and give me, and cover this part of the pond with some heat protection or heat loss. Now here, I've got four mil like toughened glass and there a sheet of perspex. Yes, there is gaps, but for me, it's not about keeping all the heat in, it's about preventing a bit of heat loss. Okay, so I'm going to remove this feeder. And what I will do, because my view is sitting here, I'll be able to sit here. The pond balls will be on there. I won't really see the fish over there because it's all white. But here, I will. And hopefully I'll see them swimming past and I'll get a good viewing point here. Now, when it's really, really cold, I might put some extra insulation over here some um, you know some netting you can get frost that frost stuff i might just sit it on i don't know but i might just leave it it depends see how it goes so that might be in the deepest winter months there's no way that last week it popped up on facebook that that was when i put the um pom balls on last year a week ago and i thought did i put them on that early was it that late i couldn't remember whether that was early late or what i just but anyway it has been getting cold Two days ago, we had some real mega frost here in Nottingham. I think it got down to about minus three, minus four. Definitely, uh, there were frost everywhere. The first real hard frost that I noticed. Plants have took a hit. 
as you can see knees going in it's probably ruined now it's caught me but i might get them in quick into my green ass and stuff and uh, give them some protection so just wanted to share with you what i've done here so the pond balls are going to be on that and then it's just left with this pot here and this glass can easily be lifted if i want to chuck some feed in for example um and i've got the thermometer under there as well so what i'm going to do i think i'm going to sit you guys there and i'm just going to go and uh do my bit i think and so it'll all be done at that end anyway So I'm really sorry about this guys, but I thought that when I was, uh, as you can see on the video, I have got a microphone on and I thought I'd got that turned on. So um, basically I am just doing four runs, four cycles with the Sludge Buster Hoover. Um, as you can see on the clear part of the um, attachment, you can see how dirty it does get. So basically the Hoover that I've got, it's a bit annoying at times because it, it stops after about 30 seconds to empty and then you have to um, then it automatically comes back on again and off so I think I did about four cycles through there don't mess about I'm just across the pond bottom and obviously now I'm putting the balls on um, what you have to aim for is you just basically throw them all on at first um, last year uh, when you do take them off they are quite green but if you don't worry about it when you take them off at the end of the season, you just hose them down, put them in the basket, uh, in the net again, and uh, just store them in the dry. And you find that at first you think, crikey, they're dirty, but actually it just kind of comes off. Um, there is a bit of muck in there at first when you put them back in, but it's just got to, you've just got to try and organise them and sort of get them so diagonally they are in line. Yes, we've got to play about with this. You can literally get it almost perfect. So what I find with the balls is if you look down here, that I would say is how they want to be. So you get this like gap here, but you get an inline. See it all the way down? Whereas here, if you align them flat, against here less gap here you get more gap you get the odd gap in the middle and you can't line it up as well bit of a strange conundrum i suppose but and then the edge is flat so you get the edge more or less little gaps but then the two ends which is the smaller loss if you like because mine's not as wide i prefer it to have bigger gaps here sun's coming out now look so you can see the sun shining on so you still get some light going through and then let's see what the fish are doing they're probably bricking it um, the fish are in there that is my pond more or less winter prep um, I don't know what I'm going to do about the shower yet um, I think I'll keep it running because last year I did and it was no problem at all. Um, the filter needs cleaning out because the water's reduced, a lot coming through the filter. And the other thing I'm definitely doing this year, 100%, I've got 20 kilo of uh, salt. So when those plants have sort of gone a bit dormant, I'm going to slap some salt in um, and get it to point. Well, just have some salt in so it's in between point you know zero and point three just as a tonic i'll probably go to the plant level actually I'll, i've got some notes we can go to a, a lower level but it's probably about point one point two so there will be a degree of salt in this pond this year i'm going to give it a try because they have still got a couple of knocks on them hopefully the salt will get that balance because they've got an inner balance inside of them from inner to outer the balance with the water and it just balances that now i'm not saying you use salt all the time you use it as a measure possibly in winter to treat the parasites so it's a temporary measure and come spring this salt wool have diluted out of this pond ready for the season next year 
So I'll give that a bash this year. As you can see, it's a very different looking pond now. I can't see the fish as normally you do. You can't see the fish if you throw, just want to throw some food in and sit there with a cup of tea and relax. But at least now I can, if I want to, take this pane of glass off, sit here and enjoy them seeing them coming up here on a nice day, a bit like today really. So on that note, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please hit that notification bell. Check me other videos out. I've got the beekeeping one going on, that series. I've got my pond, my grow one's going great. So thanks for watching. Here's the pan vacuum that I'm using. It's called the Sludge Muncher Pondero. And I bought it with like this basket thing. But the trouble with it, you need that to bigger than the bloody basket because the basket's got an outlet on it that flows back into the pond. So everything needs to be high because it's all done by gravity. Um, and once I had that on here, on here, and I think you know what I'm going to say, it dropped off the chair, bounced and fell in the pond while it was running. Fortunately, it did go under the water, but I grabbed it in time and I dried it out and it's still alive today. So thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button so, and I'll see you on the next one. Maybe I'm back and I'm done. So just to let you all know, obviously the balls are on. I took me another 30 minutes or so just to feckle about and as you do. And what I found is if you do have put balls on your pond, like I said, you're best to have down the edge, like at the shortest edge, there's like a sequence in, out, in, out. And then what you've got to look at is diagonally in line. Okay. And then you'll find that all the edges are just little triangles, two sides, sorry, are like triangles, but diagonally everything's in line. So your eyes have got to go diagonal don't think in line that way think diagonal so you've got to start off from one side and i started off from here and i've got that edge right and then pushed them in diagonally push them in diagonally all the way across and then keep going keep going keep going and i worked down here and i finally worked into this corner which is a bit awkward i'm finding a bit of a miss up here i don't know whether it's because it's not equal or something but i can mess with that I've turned this shower pump to about, I think, 40 watts. So that's just tr literally trickling through now. So that's been reduced. When it gets really cold, I don't know if to, to turn that off this year. It's got um, bio crystal in it, bio uh, meter in there. And last year I turned it off straight, you know, off. But this, but I turned it off last winter and I turned the plant filter off as well but this year I had problems with ammonia this year this spring and I'm wondering if it's because of the shower was turned off and the plant filter was isolated and disturbed last year which definitely hit it but this year as you can see all the this has obviously grown massive there's loads of roots in there now to take up the uh, nutrients and stuff so um, this has been scorched now because they've had a real bad deep frost the other day so that's been scorched this is about ready to be cut back um, this got divided but it came up really late this year for some reason and didn't flower it's obviously putting roots down because I messed about with it it's been the frost has uh, got to it um, this is evergreen and I've got a feeling that this will get knocked as well and obviously the lilies and stuff so that will need to clear out and then I've just got to decide what I do with that then. Um, like I said, I'm going to salt the pond, so I'll end on that note. I'm going to salt the pond. I'll cut this grass back at some point so it's just a neat stump. And then I'll decide uh, what I might do is just leave the plant filter turned off. And then so the tap to the um, sequence of pipes underneath are turned off and the tap to the pond return is open. So the water's still going through the filter, down the side and going through the pond and down the side of the inside the pond. 
there's a pipe in the corner which I'm sure you've all seen and then there's the shower filter so if I want to turn the, if I want to turn the shower off I can still have the pump running through the skimmer there and then the skimmer just pulls water through down the side back down there and circulates water so it's great for circulation again so like I say it's not as much sometimes um, it is about biological media but it's also about circulation as well because you turn these things off obviously circulation is not as good and in winter you still want still want good circulation koi still love you know movement of water and stuff like that and oxygen in the water and it's colder in a way so there will be plenty of oxygen but that's just my take on it anyway so that's looking great i love that a lot better um i'm happy with that the way that is we'll go and have a closer look just to conclude I'll clean the glass as you can see so it's really clean uh, clean the inside took the glass off give it a really good clean I'm not bothered about that side that can stay a bit mucky here I don't care but this side will remain clean so at night time at nine o'clock when the ear goes off and everything like that I might just lift this off just throw a through few a bit of food in there see the fish coming up and um, there's a fish there you're probably not going to see because of the glare but it just allows me to see inside the pond and that is what I want so this will be my pew for winter I'll still come out here and enjoy these like I say, I've trickled that shower right down, but I'll decide what I'm going to do with that. Um, like I say, I might just keep it running all the way through at that rate, just so water is still trickling through. There's still moisture in the in the media, so the biological, I'm thinking in my mind, it won't be that active, but it will retreat into the core of the media and be protected by you know cold and stuff and then hopefully retain some biological bacteria ready for a great start, whacking the pump up, giving it a good cleaning spring on the top inside the first layer um, and also in here it will skim obviously some of the water off very slowly so um, yeah there we go so the next video will probably be me putting the salt in thanks for watching, I hope that's been of use, I hope you've enjoyed that not a lot to enjoy i suppose but i hope you find the aromatic pom balls of interest once you've messed about with them they're in they're done the four inch off here off water so off the ball sinks so they don't blow off they stay in situ they're really good i've found that they do keep the water temperature naturally the ambient temperature higher um, yesterday this water was 9.5 was 8.5 when that, that frost the other day two days ago it was 8.5 degrees i remember looking at, at the this uh, thermometer here which i've took out so what i might do now i think i've got some spare uh, square thermometers and humidity dials i've got one and i'm thinking how i can set it up just to throw the cable in the sensor in the water in the filter or something but then have it the actual display the square display is about that size somewhere waterproof which i'm thinking maybe under here i know it's a bit daft but screwing it to there screwing it screwing it to here so i can screw it to there it's always dry and i can just have a quick look at night see what the temperature's in the pond i'm done thanks for watching join the friendly koi keepers on facebook please subscribe Let's get these numbers up. Please comment. Thanks for watching.